Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Welcome to TechSoup's virtual Zoom event. I'm so excited because this is one of our partners. We've never, well, I can say we, I have never done a webinar um, with in the Zoom motion, okay, Zoom meeting with one of our partners. So I was so excited when Rally up said, Let, let's do Zoom so they can <laughs> see your faces engage with you. So today our webinar is about shattering fundraising records with your next virtual event. In this webinar, you're gonna learn how to build community with connection-based activities during your virtual events to improve your fundraising events. If this is your first time here at TechSoup, we wanna welcome you on behalf of our over 100 partners here at TechSoup that provide software and hardware and free webinars. I am Aretha Simons, I'm the webinar producer here. This is being recorded, so you'll get the recording along with the slides within 48 hours, maybe tomorrow, who knows? So since I said we're on Zoom, I'm excited to let you know how you can engage today. Please, please try your best to um, remain on mute. This presentation will take about 30 minutes so after that, you'll be able to ask questions and unmute yourself by using the raise your hand option. So right at the bottom, there's a little happy face and you click on it and there's a raise your hand option. But Rally Up has some team members here that are in the chat room. So they'll be answering your questions in the chat room. So feel free to ask your questions as we're doing the presentation. So I'm gonna move out the way and introduce our speakers. <laughs> um, today we have Leanne, she's the Director of Customer Service Education for Rally Up. And we have Michelle. She is the senior copywriter for Rally Up. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and, and let them take it over for now. I'm so excited that you're all here. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Aretha. Thank you for hosting us and having us today. We are very excited to be here. I am going to share our PPT with everybody and we are rally up. We are so excited to partner with TechSoup on this webinar today. As Aretha said, I am Michelle. I am the senior copywriter for Rally Up, and I am joined by my incredible co-host Leanne. She is our director for customer education, and she is just an ocean of knowledge when it comes to fundraisers and how to host your virtual event from conception to completion. So we are excited to get into shattering fundraising records with your next virtual event today. As Aretha did mention, we have amazing colleagues from RallyUp who are in the live chat. So if at any point today you have questions or comments or concerns, please chat away, comment, and we will be there happy and eager to answer everything for you. But to get started, we wanted to take you through our agenda today. We have come up with a three-step fundraising framework for hosting your virtual events. And we've all just gone through the global pandemic of COVID, which forced us into social distancing and moving in-person events online. And we want to know how do you maximize your return on investment with these events? How do you hook your audience, get them engaged, get them attending, raise funds, maximize the amount of funds that you can raise, what really excites people, and then what connects them to your cause? As Aretha said, there are such amazing causes out there and we want to get them out and get them heard. The most amazing thing about virtual events is what we are experiencing today, global audiences who don't need to beat any traffic to get to your event, don't need to cancel any meetings, can sit comfortably on the couch with a glass of wine or cup of tea and enjoy it. So. Leanne is really going to take us through those step one, two, and three, and then we're going to look at some amazing successful events that have been held on the Rally Up platform and try and show you some examples of working fundraisers that have found monumental success in their virtual event. So we are excited and we're excited to engage with you guys today. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, Michelle. Thank Hello you so everybody. much. Where are you joining us from, Leanne? Um, I am joining you from Tucson, Arizona. It is sunny in 80s today. Absolutely wow. beautiful. 
Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. We are excited to pick your brain and learn so much today. And oh, it's an honor to have you. So thank you for it's, it's giving great your to time. be here. <laughs> um, so what we really wanted to start with today was a poll. We want to hear from you guys. What are your biggest problems with virtual events? And this is really for anybody. You can see Aretha has put it up on our screen. Thank you, Aretha. Whether you are looking to host a virtual event, whether you have hosted one in the past and you've run into different concerns that you thought, oh, that didn't really work or that was worrisome. Or if, um, again, you are looking to host one and you're concerned, is it that you're concerned about the technology, you're not sure how to run the technology, you're worried that your audience will not know how to run the technology or the site will be difficult to navigate. Is it that you're concerned about engaging with your audience? How do you do that online? In person, you can see them, you can speak to them. There's that instant connection. How do you obtain that in a virtual world? Is it that you're worried about how to actually get donations? How do you raise funds? Is it the post-event commitment, the experience, or is it marketing? Are you worried about how do you market your virtual event? That seems like a daunting task. How do we go about doing that? So let's take this poll, click your little option, and here we have it coming in. Thank you, Aretha. Again, if you have anything extra to comment, add or suggest, please feel free to do it in the live chat. You don't need to restrict yourself to this poll. But it looks like 27% are saying engaging with your audience. And that is really a huge, huge part of your virtual event and something we're really going to dive deep into with this webinar. Because when it's in person, you have John and Bill and every other audience member right in front of you. You can see them, you can engage with them, speak with them. So how do you do that in an online atmosphere? And as we know, the World Wide Web is an amazing platform. And so we really just want to learn, and Leanne is going to take us deep into it today, of how to navigate it to best suit you, your fundraiser, your cause, your audience, and the style you're looking for, and how to create that connection. So that will be a huge part of our webinar today. And before we get into our three-step fundraising framework, I wanted to introduce who Rally Up is. I am the senior copyright. Leanne is our director of customer education. And really, Rally Up is such an amazing company. You can see over here on the third bullet, ranked number 323 on the 2021 Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the world. And that is because it is an industry leading do it all fundraising platform. And it's really exceptional. A single online venue where you can run multiple activities within your virtual events in an easy to navigate site. And it is peer to peer crowdfunding auctions for anything that you really want to do from an a fun to a raffle to a live stream rally up does it all so we will invite you at the end of this for an exciting consultation session with us so stay tuned for that but let's get into it leanne and i'm excited to hear step one how do we hook them how do we engage people and get them so excited to attend our virtual event yes we are definitely going to be talking about that um <laughs> It's exciting for me to see where everyone's from. Gosh, we have everybody from all over the world, Ireland, shout out to UK people. That's really great. Um, so hook them. You're having a virtual event, and I think it's very interesting that some of you pointed out the burnout and the screen fatigue. It's mm -hmm. a really good point. You know, how do we just make it a little different to make them want to come? Um, and so that's what our first section is about, the hook them. And we've kind of thought about this as, um, we all have a favorite song that maybe is on replay on our playlist, or if we're driving, we hear it. Doesn't matter what the person next to us is saying, we just turn it up because we love this song, right? It, it resonates with us somehow. 
Um, maybe it's a specific lyric that is, uh, you know, touches us for something we're going through in our life right now. Could be the melody, the song, an instrumental. But there is a hook that makes us want to stop and listen. And we want to kind of apply that same thing to our event. We want to get people hooked to be able to come to our event and then have that hook resonate to, so that they become a lifetime fan of your cause. So we're going to talk about four points um, that we'll get into the sub points of those, but we want to provide them with a reason to come. Um, fundraise before your virtual event. We're going to talk about marketing your event and then making an emotional connection. Um, I'm going to toss out a lot of ideas, like general ideas, and follow those up with some specific examples. But just know that these are ideas to help you begin to get creative and maybe, you know, there are new ideas for you. You don't have to do all of these, but um, we wanted to give you um, just, you know, broaden the horizons a little bit um, to help with your fundraising efforts. So first, to bring in the widest audience, it's helpful to appeal to all age groups. Um, you know, maybe think about uh, if you have an older demographic of donors, try to appeal to the younger audience or vice versa, um, just to, you know, gain more attention to your cause. Um, so you can do that um, with special entertainment. Maybe it's with like different people. It could be a celebrity of large scale or a well-known local person um, who will participate on your virtual event to begin to draw people to want to come. Um, for music lovers out there, maybe you have a band or a singer who performs on your event. Um, for the younger audience, you can include an activity that's trending on social media. And we'll get into a little bit more on that later. Um, but that's a little appeal to your younger crowd. For those people who love games, um, you know, play a game on there, have a trivia contest or play Pictionary. Um, you can begin to have contests for your audience. Maybe they post a funny photo of your, their pet and people will vote on that in the chat. Um, just some kind of engaging activity that's different that gets them to want to come to your event. You can also add incentives to those. Um, maybe you have special prizes that are only available during your event time or different experiences like those contests or, you know, the uh, performance that's only available on your event to get them to draw and to come. Um, another great way is to encourage watch parties um, for your virtual event. Then your supporters can be inviting people over to their house and it's creating little mini events and connections, senses of connection within your larger virtual event. And as they're inviting all their friends and family, it's you know, gaining more attention to your cause and maybe even creating some new donors for your cause. Um, fundraise before your virtual event. Again, here's some just different ideas, uh, maybe with your event registration where people are coming to you know, buy the registration ticket for your event, add a raffle and an auction or a sale on your event registration page. Then not only are they buying a ticket to your event, but they can begin participating by buying entries into the raffle, begin bidding on auction items, and then driving those prices up, which again translates for more funds raised for your organization. And it's nice that you have it all there on one page. If you offer raffles or drawings, do some early bird drawings that lead up to your event. You could even do give prizes away um, that are related to your event. Maybe some of the prizes are um, you have like a five star dinner delivered to the winner's house the night of your event. Um, just different ideas to keep people coming back to your page, purchasing entries, and again, donations to your cause. Adding peer-to-peer -to, -peer to your event registration is a great way to get the word out because you will invite your supporters to participate in the promotion of your event. Um, you, there's lots of things you can do to create even community and excitement within that. If you have your promoters um, or someone sign up to participate and promote your fundraiser, they can get their own link and their own fundraising page that they can customize, tell why they're excited about this cause and this event, 
Um, maybe if they're hosting a watch party, they can put that information there, um, post that on their social media, then they're, they're reaching out to their circles of influence, which is more than your circle of influence with just your donor base. Again, getting more attention to your cause. You could even offer prizes to maybe the person who raises the most funds by promoting your event. Um, you could include them in your virtual event as a guest host, or maybe if they're to appeal to the shy types, you know, you give them some type of gift card for their efforts in promoting and raising funds for your organization. Always to, to create a virtual community and excitement and buzz for your cause. For marketing your event, this is also very important. Um, one of the main things you wanna make sure you do is to brand your event. Have a professional looking landing page with your organization's logo, being able to even change the link to include you know, the subdomain of your organization. Um, a lot of people can be skeptical online about making a donation someplace because they don't know if it's real or not. So with that added branding, you give legitimacy to your page and confidence to people to go ahead and make that donation. Utilize social media. Um, I know we have organizations of all sizes here. So within your organization's ability, create the strongest marketing strategy that you can. Use as many social networks as you can with posts, um, if you can buy ads on those. Do some interactive games, creating a hashtag, a Facebook page, all the different ways social media is used to get the word out. And one thing that is, um, can be often overlooked, make sure you post the link to your event in your social media bio. So people always have a way to get there and then go to be able to register, look at all the activities you have going on and make donations to your cause. If you want to appeal to a younger audience or you have a younger audience, use TikTok and Instagram Reels and follow the trends that are on social media there that are always changing. And if you are not up on those trends, it's not a problem. You can create your own focus group by just interviewing some teenagers or 20 somethings you know, they will for sure be up on the latest trends. You can pick their brain, get ideas from them. And it's a nice way to then be get them to um, come involved, become involved with your cause, right? They're probably totally flattered that you have asked them their opinion. You can share about your cause and you can even be creating lifetime fans right there from helping them help you with your marketing. And you can also encourage your supporters to be posting, reposting the link to your fundraiser on their social media. Again, reaching out to those other circles. Teaser videos are a great way to keep the buzz going all the way up until your event. Um, maybe you can show behind the scenes type of videos, um, just any little thing to keep people interested and reminded, hey, our virtual event is coming up. If you have a raffle or a drawing within one of the activities, um, you could offer uh, sharing rewards. So if somebody has already purchased entries, you can incentivize them to share that raffle or drawing on their social media by offering them extra entries into the drawing for sharing it. And then if somebody purchases from that link, you can even offer them extra entries because they have brought in a donation. The entries are free to you, but it does incentivize people to be sharing, promoting, and getting the word out about your cause. And then one of the most important is making an emotional connection. This is the hook and hook them. Um, sometimes like our cause can feel a little abstract to people by just reading the mission statement. So they can agree that, yeah, it's a great cause, but when we put a face to those statistics, um, that's what really gives them the hook to um, stay involved with your organization. So sharing stories of the impact, what people's donations are going to, how lives are affected, that will resonate with people emotionally and keep them coming back. So testimonials, whether it's through video or articles, um, share those stories on social media. At your virtual event, um, if this 
is applicable for your organization, invite someone whose life has been changed by your organization to come and give their testimony. Um, that will is definitely, those always get me. So, um, but continue to um, realize that donors want to be part of something and providing them with that emotional return on investment is a great way to keep them hooked and fans from your cause. Yes, amazing. And thank you, Leanne. That's definitely something that we can all relate to, why you're actually giving. And here we have this biennial study that shows 54% of people said that they give to the cause because they believe in the mission of the organization. So really make sure that your mission is clear and it is out there. And that is what Leanne was really talking about with marketing and how you make sure that people really understand what your cause is raising funds for. 44% said that they believe that their gift can make a difference. And that really is what Leanne was touching on with share testimonies, get, get the people who are receiving your recipients of the donations involved in your event, help that create this giving back to the community over there that we see 27% really respond to. 39% said that it's experiencing personal satisfaction, enjoyment or fulfillment at the event. So really what Leanne said about incentives, what are people going to win at your event? 39% um, is quite a large percent of people who get excited to attend your event because maybe they're going to win this amazing raffle prize or this once in a lifetime experience. So how is it that you can hook people with a personal incentive? And here we see 36% really respond to supporting the same causes mm -hmm. annually. And this talks to community. So feeling like you are a part of something, feeling like you're a part of a community that is giving back, that is making a difference and the last point there was 23% are adhering to religious beliefs. And that's really just touching on know your audience, know your target market. Um, is it an audience that is responding to a religious belief? Is it for animals? Is it for the environment? And then you really want to brand your event according to that. So now that we've heard Leanne talk about marketing, and social media. We know that we live in a world of social media, a very oversaturated online world, but we wanna hear from you guys in the chat. What do you think are the best social media platforms for promoting and marketing your virtual event? If you were to host a virtual event within the next month or two, what is the platform you're going to go to? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it Twitter, LinkedIn? So chat in our, um, oh, Aretha, thank you. This is the, the poll there. We just wanna hear from everybody in the chat. What is it that you think? Instagram, Facebook, I'm seeing Instagram seems to be the most popular and um, amazing, yes. <laughs> everybody's saying Instagram or Facebook depends on your audience. Yes, Karen really just hit the nail on the head there because it really is about knowing who you are marketing your event for. Here we have, and I'm going to share this with you guys as the, the chat is coming in. Rally Up created a survey and it was um, their first ever practices for giving Tuesday fundraising survey. And really what this survey aimed to do was try and help individuals and organizations who are raising funds gain insight into what is working, what's not working. And it, it was a large survey based around promotion and your actual events and what was the most effective online fundraising tools and activities? So the survey has included individual and small group fundraisers, nonprofit organizations, enterprise CSR programs, anybody looking to host a virtual fundraising event. And as we can see here, the promotion, the most effective online fundraising tool was 
in according to the survey, Facebook at 87%. So that's a whopper of a number. And that is really what we're seeing in the chats. Facebook is a great tool to utilize because it really is the one social media platform that appeals to a large demographic of people, whether it is your youth, whether, whether it is your senior group, you are able to host lives, you are able to create community chat groups on Facebook, you are able to throw out Facebook ads. So again, it is one of the platforms that really appeal to a large demographic. So makes sense as to why it's 87% there. We have email marketing at 76%. And this is something Leanne and I will get further into within the webinar and how to send out your emails, what's this, what is effective with email marketing um, and so forth. And touching on that point for today, don't, don't feel like you have to jot all of this information down. We will be sending out this as a clean package to all of you and all the resources that we covered today, you will have access to. Um, and then you can see social media, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. TikTok at a small percentage there, 5%, but that's because it's a new platform. It's a very young platform. But as Leanne said, know your audience. And if you are appealing to that, younger audience, perhaps TikTok is the way to go. Um, and then the most effective online fundraising activities for your actual event was 54% seeing raffles. So there we go. Raffles are what get people excited, get them engaged, heighten the interaction in your event. We have auctions there at 33% and then crowdfunding and live streaming tied at 20%. And this really takes us into our second step that Leanne is going to headline us through. But which activity works best for your virtual event? And activities are really how you're going to engage your audience and get them excited and create that sense of interaction and community. So is it that you're going to run a raffle? Or are you going to find a platform that allows you to do a multitude of different fundraising activities? So that really takes us into our second step, step two of raise funds. Yeah, and I did see some um, conversation in the chat about raffles uh, not being allowed in some states, which is mm -hmm. true. Um, our team can help you with that. There is an alternative if you'd like to run a drawing in the form of a sweepstakes, which is a little different, but our, um, that is something our team can help, help you through. And uh, we have a lot of organizations in California who can't run raffles, um, who do choose to run a charity drawing through the form of a sweepstakes. So just to let you know that. So let's get into raise funds. Um, we wanna talk about four points here. Uh, making it easy for people to donate, make it fun for them to donate. Um, we want to talk about interaction and connection, and then a little tidbit on going hybrid. So for making it easy to pe for people to donate, um, one of the main things you want to do is make sure you have a clear call to action button. Um, that will, you know, people can't miss it. It'll be able easy for them to be able to participate um, monetarily by making a donation on your fundraiser. Uh, we think about using a text to give. Everybody's on their phones, right? We've talked a little bit about screen fatigue. Um, using text to give where you can promote your fundraiser with a keyword, people text that to a number and receive the link to your fundraiser right on their phone then they can, um, at their convenience, go and participate in your fundraiser through the different activities that you have. Also, keep your event on one branded online venue. When, pe when people piece together um, different platforms to try to accomplish all they want, it can be easy for donors to get lost because they get taken away from the page, um, especially maybe an older demographic, you know, where do you, how do you get back? So have one venue where you can do everything, brand your organization, run all your different activities to keep it simple for people on one page. And then of course, we wanna make it fun for people to donate. Um, just like screen fatigue, people are a little fatigued at the donation, uh, you know, a page with a donate button. Let's get creative in the ways we can involve our donors. 
Um, again, knowing your audience is key. Appeal to all different types of people and likes and dislikes. So you wanna give different ways for people to participate. Um, we talked a little before, some people love games. Like whenever I go on a trip, my husband always wants to play the memory game. And I'm like, no, I just don't wanna think. <laughs> so some people like games, some people don't. Playing trivia games or Pictionary or some other type of game on your event is a great way to engage those type of people. Um, you can hold a flash auction, have pop up an item for people to bid on, give it a time frame, say 10 minutes, and then people just bid, bid, bid. And at the end of those 10 minutes, the highest bidder is the winner. Really helps to drive up donations pretty quickly. Some people love the paddle races like you do at an in-person event. You can do that online by changing the amount um, on your donate button to the different levels. And of course, during paddle raises, as people are um, donating at the different levels is where you can tell more stories about your event or about your organization and people affected um, by your cause, how much what their donations will be going to, um, you know, giving that information and education about your organization. Another idea is contests. Again, a general idea that you can get very creative on, but here's just some different ideas. Um, maybe leading up to your event, you have people buy an entry um, to a caption a meme contest and they receive an image and then their entry is the caption for that meme. Um, your team can go through, maybe choose the top 10 and then at your virtual event, you'll have those listed and you can talk about them and maybe even have the audience vote on them for the winner. You could do the same kind of things with photos. Maybe um, you know a lot of people or donors into photography, but people could take pictures and you vote on those and maybe you're going to use that in some of your next marketing uh, materials. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you have um, videos where just like something random and silly, people can um, buy an entry to submit a video for the best whistling of a certain song or the best chicken or rooster um, imitation. I would come to an event to watch those videos. I think it would just be a lot of fun. Um, and again, showing the top 10 and then in your uh, event, people can just vote on those. So all just different ways to get creative um, and you know, knowing your audience and what will work well. And then interaction and connection, which is important because on a virtual event, you, know, you have people from all over the place. How do you connect them? The live chat is a great way to do that. Um, through the live chat, people can post in their comments like you guys are doing here. Like I feel like I'm getting to know you guys and um, I'm loving reading these comments. You can answer donor questions, read off people's comments, or call out donations as they're made. Just different ways um, to, to bring everybody together, including polls, kind of like we did. Um, you can ask the audience questions so they can get to know one another. They can just be about their likes, dislikes, um, getting the audience opinions on things. Polls are a great way to do that. And then our last point of go hybrid. With all of these online tools, there's really no reason why for your next in-person event, you can't add that hybrid audience um, in a virtual audience. So I just kind of wanted to like expand your thinking on that a little bit. Um, like Michelle said, you are not limited to just people who can physically come to your event. They can participate from their living room, from a coffee shop, all over the world. And so again, driving up donations, the more people that come are more likely to donate. Well, yes, if you create a hybrid event, you're really maximizing on that investment because your donor pool just expands to, as you said, a global audience. And that's incredible. And touching on interaction and connection with as a virtual event, simple things can really make a large difference when trying to connect with your audience. Bring people to the video foreground when they're asking something. Engage with people by name. Really make them feel seen, heard, and create that, that sense of personal connection that you would otherwise have pretty easily in your in-person events. And um, 
little things, lighting, sound, framework, make sure everything is clear, everything is easy to navigate, find a platform that people are not going to struggle to navigate or have to learn how to navigate, find an easy platform that does all these amazing things that Leanne just touched on. Um, so really the finer details, and that takes us into our third and final step and I'm excited. How do we keep people coming back to your cause post that one hour event window? Yes, keep them, keeping the hook there to keep them and to become lifetime fans for your cause. Uh, we're going to go over three points about giving them value in those post event emails, um, keeping them engaged and in the loop, and then keep the momentum going with different activities. So how do we give them value in the post event emails? Um, we want to thank them, but don't spam them. <laughs> we want to convey to them, you know, the value of their participation in their donation. Um, but make sure your emails have a main purpose. Keep it simple and impactful, um, which I, for me, no long emails because uh, we call those TLDRs, too long, didn't read. Uh, make sure that you have that main purpose and you just put that out there. And more bite-sized pieces are easier for people to just read quickly and then move along. Um, there was a study, a 2016 U.S. Trust study, that talked about um, how five, one out of five wealthy donors stopped giving to at least one organization the prior year, so 2015. And the top cited reason was that people received too frequent solicitations. Um, I know that I give to some causes who I just really love, but I've had to unsubscribe to their emails because I've just, I get like two or three a day and mm -hmm. I can't keep up. <laughs> I was like, ah. So make sure that um, you have a purpose with that. And even in those emails, invite them to join your social media pages. And you can incentivize them to do that by saying, you know, you're posting images or videos from the event to get them onto that page. And then remember on those pages too is where you wanna be sharing those testimonials. And even after your event, be sharing those testimonials, share the impact. Um, another idea for that is maybe you have direct letters from recipients that you can send out to your donors. Those people that has, lives have been changed by your cause have them write a letter that you can send out to donors. Um, in this, the research that we did, two thirds of survey participants, so 67%, report that videos of success stories are the most effective way to show donors their contribution is having an impact. Um, reports also show that the money, showing how the money was spent in reports came in second. And blog posts of success stories was the third top reason. So, um, You wanna keep them engaged and in the loop. And um, again, doing that through social media, like we kind of just have talked about, um, ongoing just images and videos of stories because really in your social media feed, who does not wanna see something positive these days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always, I love when I get those and sometimes I sit at lunch, watch them and I'll cry, but just, that people are doing good in the world is such always a good reminder and an encouragement. And then keep them active, or keep the momentum going with different activities. Um, if you've just done a big fundraiser, you know, plan something smaller, like maybe it's just holding a raffle or an online auction. Um, these are great ways that you don't have to just do one fundraiser a year, but smaller ways where people can continue to make donations for your organization. And when you do those smaller ones, make it for like a, a niche cause. Um, it's maybe funding a specific need or a different segment of your cause. So maybe you're building a building. Um, you know, you could do all the funds from this raffle are going towards um, this building or paying someone's medical expenses. Um, great, again, someone's gonna identify with, oh, the story of this person needing medical expenses paid for and more likely to donate. Um, this niche cause, these are great hooks to get, keep people coming back and making donations. Another idea is, 
create something at your organization where it's volunteer for a day. Um, maybe someone you can you, uh, have it where they can work directly with people who are affected by your organization. Maybe it's administrative work. You could do all different aspects of your organization because remember you're appealing to different likes and dislikes. But who doesn't like to come and feel like they've helped someone do something? So if you have needs, invite your donors to come and participate as a volunteer for a day. And then you never know how that might translate to you know, volunteering on a regular basis. Amazing, Leanne. And I see Phoebe is asking, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, how do you reach donors that are not online? So that wouldn't be through email, that's really through packages, through little gift bags, it doesn't need to be anything elaborate, but anything to a, a handwritten letter, something personal, something that's really going to, as Leanne was saying, appeal to that specific audience. Um, a bit more challenging when they're not online because you can't just send out that easy link or text to give, but there are definite ways around that. Um, Leanne, I don't know if you had anything other to suggest. I guess that's why good old fashioned mail still works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, amazing. So really keep your audience engaged. Remember that your event doesn't end when your one hour window does. It really continues on. And that's where you want to create your sense of community. Pop that Facebook group together, allow people to interact and engage, reach out to organizations and foundations who you think are interested in your cause. Have them share your link, um, share your fundraiser, send out a live recording of the event for people who weren't able to attend and let it go viral, we hope. But <laughs> thank you so much, Leanne. Um, Leanne is going to take us through some successful events that have been held on Rally Up, virtual events that used a multitude of different activities and what they were and why they were so successful. Leanne? Yeah, um, we have some great ones here. Uh, the first one is this kite board for cancer. Um, this is put on by Project Koru. I think that's probably how you pronounce it. Um, they help young adult cancer survivors in the healing process, kind of getting back engaged in life with using the outdoors and community. And they hold this kite board for cancer. Um, you can see all the different aspects in the thon, sale, auction, raffle, events, tickets, and live streaming. So kite boarders came, it was held in Oregon on a lake. And they did the athon where they did so many laps, I believe within a certain time frame, and people could pledge per lap that they kiteboarded. Um, they had sale items with swag, t-shirts for their event, hats, all kinds of water bottles and such. They held the online auction, raffle, purchased uh, tickets to come to the event, even just as a viewer. Um, and then they had a live stream portion where they live streamed from the event so an audience could see what was going on. Um, and I believe they raised $153,000. So I apologize that uh, 23,000 there is um, not correct. But yeah, they raised $153,000. So just a nice event and a way to use the virtual aspect to that. This next one is my favorite and the company favorite. <laughs> um, be, while the pandemic first started back in 2020, there were two teenage girls that you can see here who wanted to do something to help their community. So they put on a cartwheel a thon. They promoted their a thon. Um, the idea was people could pledge per cartwheel done in 10 minutes. And they live streamed these two girls cartwheeling and cartwheeling, cartwheeling for 10, 10 minutes. And they raised over $13,000 for their local food bank. So I was very curious to see how many cartwheels can you do in 10 minutes? Between the two of them, they did 350 cartwheels. I was like, that's really crazy. There was some large donations and I thought, yeah, people really put up for them. So it was really cool. It was a, a great inspiration too. Like if two teenage girls can do this, we can all do something. Yeah. Um, the Hawaii Parkinson's Association, they had an interesting uh, one. 
they had a virtual exercise day. So their virtual event, they had all different kinds of exercise teachers and they had some surprise teachers show up for the event. Um, it was a crowdfunding and you can see they added the peer to peer for the promotional aspect. Um, and then they had the live streaming, which was the exercise day. They offered um, to the participants in the peer to peer who raised over $25, they received a surprise gift. So that encouraged people to be promoting and sharing the link to the fundraiser. And they raised over $50,000 for the Parkinson's Association. And then the last one is the See Her, Empower Her. Um, as you can see, they did a crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer and live streaming. They actually did watch parties where people just kind of opened their house, invited people over to do a watch party around their virtual event. And they raised $70,000 that helped those impacted by domestic violence in the Boston area. Amazing. Wow. 70,000 raised. So mm -hmm. just shows you, you can cut the costs of your in-person event. No need for the venue. Take it online and you can raise, you can shadow those fundraising records. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leanne. Um, I love those examples. And as I promised in the beginning, I would gift to everybody attending this webinar. Thank you so much for joining us mm -hmm. today. I hope that it was insightful and helpful and we answered all of your questions that you had. And we would love to offer you a free fundraising strategy session with Rally Up. We have amazing consultants to do this all day, every day, and we'll take you through the whole process from step one, step two, step three. Um, and we would also love for you to check out what we have to offer at Rally Up. Here is the little link. Again, we will be sending all of this information that we shared with you today. So anything that you need, don't hesitate to let us know. And thank you so much, Aretha, for having us and Leanne for hosting with me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, it's fun to get to meet everyone. Yes. Excellent. Can you stop sharing your screen? We want to see everybody's face so that we can see if there's some questions that people want to ask live. And thank you, Allison, for joining us in the background. Allison's here. Great. That was amazing. I learned something. I was like taking notes first. I started writing on a little bit. <laughs> now I'm running out of room. I got Good. so many notes. So I want to know if anybody had any questions, feel free to um, use the raise your hand option where that little smiley face is at the bottom of your screen. And then we will ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask your question live. I mean, when do you get our partners here live that you can ask questions? <laughs> this is rare. Yeah. Okay, Tara Lynn, if I pronounce your name right. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. You pronounced it correctly. It's Tara Lynn. Um, I'm the president of Titus Single Parent Mentoring and our Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math program here in Southern California, Los Angeles County. Uh, our nonprofit is, um, is not as big. It's, it seems to have shrinked a little as far as our members shrinked a little bit because of COVID because they were just burnt out with a lot of the online, but we provide um, STEM scholarships to inner city underserved youth. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering how does, does um, you know, as far as who you serve, do we have to have a certain operation budget uh, in order to receive your, uh, your service or um, is it, you know, we're very, <laughs> right now we're very thin on our, on our bottom line. Yep, nope. Rally Up was created specifically for nonprofit organizations of any size. We've yeah. done everything from your large corporate responsibility to small local pet shelters, even a rat shelter, no joke. Yeah. So <laughs> everybody's got their cause. Um, so yes, it, you know, there's no, no requirements. We just want to help you raise funds for your cause. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll definitely reach out. We have a big event coming up on May 1st and I'm going to need your help right away. So, Yay. Perfect. Cool. Amazing. Uh, We'd awesome. love to help. Thank you. That was a great question. Hi, John. You can unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is John uh, Romano. I'm with Ex uh, Disaster Central Executive Director. And uh, the question it relates to the digital marketing aspects. You know, oftentimes these events require a real digital marketing um, component. 
And uh, so what I was wondering uh, if uh, Rally Up has, shines in there in any way, you know, because we're currently running a Google AdWords, you know, campaign, you know, we're doing, we've got all the social media properties. And uh, so, but digital marketing is a pretty, pretty good nut to crack there. And I was just wondering if, how Rally Up uh, plays into that. Yes, our marketing team would be happy to sit down with you and look at what you're doing and, you know, help make suggestions to that. So we can definitely help with that. Okay. Should I just leave my email in the uh, Q&A or how, how would we reach you, basically? Um, yes, you can do that. And um, one of our customer success team can reach out to you um, to set, set something up. Okay. All right. Thank you. And John, you're also okay. welcome. Sorry, John, you're also no, welcome okay. to go to the rallyup.com site and um, mm -hmm. in creating an experience, one of our experts will be happy to walk you through all of your questions, uh, including marketing and how to market for the digital world, as you're saying. Yeah, can someone okay. from Rally Up um, put that link in the chat room several times so people can um, mm -hmm. click on that link for their free um, assessment or consult? If you click on that link, it'll open up another window. It will not remove you from Zoom. So um, feel free to go ahead and click on that link. Hi, Andrew, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, good afternoon. Um, I'm the executive director at Project Oceanology. We are a 50 year old STEM science based uh, program. And oh. Now I can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I just arrived here as the executive director a month and a half ago, and our online marketing and use of online, the online world for donations is almost non-existent. A matter of fact, our donation base is almost non-existent. So uh, I'm curious what Raleigh Up would say for a suggestion to someone in my position uh, who's looking to expand this and also to harness this 50 year anniversary, literally at the moment I walk in the door. So I'm trying to plan an event for this fall and really I'm interested in your ideas about hybrid marketing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we can, again, like if you want to sit down and um, we can talk with you more specifically, cause I'm sure like sure. there's specifics that are different for each organization. Um, but yeah, it's like starting from the ground up, really. It sounds like you're kind of rebuilding for the online world, huh? Uh, building for the online world. Yeah. So it's just not <laughs> something the organization has really harnessed in the past. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really interested in getting some expertise and we'll definitely be willing to take advantage of the consult, but, yeah. um, is the story that I'm telling you here is something that's common, you know, folks who just haven't really been in this world in the past and are trying to jump in. You know, more so before, before the pandemic, because people are used to like just doing in person in person and the pandemic really pushed people to make that jump to the online world. So, um, I, you know, starting small with. Um, you know, running, you know, like an auction or a raffle or something to get your feet wet and get used to it too, is you're, you know, you're discovering these things too. And then, yeah, our team is here to help you um, to continue to grow and see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we look forward to working with you and thank you so much for hosting this today. It's great. Yay. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Andrew. Hi. Hi, Vienna. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi, thank you so much again for taking my um, question. I'm so excited to hear this, all this great information. Um, we're actually preparing to launch our inaugural outreach and fundraising um, awards appreciation party. Um, like everyone was saying, want to make it fun. Um, we are a local nonprofit here in Chicago, Illinois. Been working in a community phase one, building those relationships. So now as we prepare to go to market, as Leanne said, and all the other callers, uh, well, participants trying to see how we can navigate this online space and in-person space to just introduce our organization, our initiatives that we already been getting started just to scale and grow. And wanted to, cause I've been out here doing a lot of um, self-developing in the market space and it's so many things you can do and just wanted to see if um, re-up I'm sorry rally up is a one 
I'm just looking for a one all in one platform to be able to engage, you know, our community, build capacity, our membership, and just continue to advance. Yeah. So that's great that's question. My question. <laughs> great question. Um, yeah. So can you ex explain to me ex what you're looking for in the all in one platform a little bit more, just so I make sure I understand your question? Yeah. So we're looking again to um, start, we're we'll launching our outreach and fundraising campaign to build that capacity, engage our community and wanted to, you know, have the online auctions, you know, all the things that you already talked about, but bring it together in one platform. So it won't be all over the place. And our um, Founders Day is March 25th. Not sure if that's enough time to even get acclimated and up and going with Rally Up to ensure our event success. So that's pretty much our goal. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure that was what you were referring to. Uh, yes, and exactly what we call ourselves, an all-in-one platform where you can run all these different activity types. We have seven different activity types. On one campaign, you can mix and match as you like. Um, we have integrations, so you can integrate all the donor information to your CRMs. It's fully brandable for your organization. You can even remove Rally Up entirely, so it just looks exactly like your organization's webpage. Um, so yes. That's good to know. I look so forward to um, being able to get a um, consultation. <laughs> Get yeah, and, it, and getting setting up, um, you know, your fundraiser it does not take long, so you will be able to meet your deadline that you have. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Great, thank you. Okay, Stephen, I see you. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, and then next will be Lily. Thank you. Um, hi. So, in terms of this, I live in Los Angeles, and in the private school and the public school arena. Most of the nonprofit work that is done is the once a year big push <clears throat> is these big online, of, uh, big in-person events. And obviously COVID has, COVID has killed that. How do you tie in to be able to give an organization the ability to do a silent and or live auction through your site? Do you have that capability or no? You can... Um... You can do uh, like an in-person auction and turn it into an online auction by like creating QR codes at like in your all around all of your um, prizes. And then people can come and um, scan the QR code, be taken right to your online auction and then bid everything. Turning everything into online auction is really helpful for you guys because it saves a lot of work. Um, you don't have to collect bid sheets at the end. Tax receipts are already automatically sent. Um, the money is automatically charged. It really saves your organization a lot of time. So I would encourage pushing even your in-person auction to an online auction. Well, we do now where they have one of those signups where you have, um, you get an app or whatever on your phone mm -hmm. and they text you to say, hey, you've been outbid and stuff like that. Do you tie in with the company that does that or you do it separately? We do it through our platform. Yep. We give email or and they can opt in for text notifications if they're outbid so people can just stay engaged uh, with their item and be, you know, pushing up the price. Cool. Michelle, call me on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Thanks. You got it. I got a job. Lily, go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, okay. So my organization, um, we host like a trivia event every year, or rather we have. Um, and to be honest, it has not raised a ton of money in the past. My director mainly does it um, as a chance to engage the community. And so I'm wondering if there's ever been something like a either hybrid event or just all virtual event that you guys have done that is a trivia event. Um, wondering if you guys have seen something like that or how did it go? How are you guys able to help support that? Um, there's probably some like hybrid trivia events that have happened. Um, we, they have seen it where people, um, they've done drawings for uh, the winners to participate in the trivia. So it makes it a little bit more exclusive. And then at the trivia event, that's sort of the virtual event. So that's another little bit of an idea that you could use. Um, but I think you could draw in your, if you have an in-person event with your live stream, draw your crowds together um, and just get creative in the ways that people answer. Okay. Yeah. I was, I guess I was kind of curious whether or not we'd be able, like if it, if it does look hybrid, could a group be online virtually kind of in what you guys mentioned, like a watch party where they're all together. They're just not with us for whatever COVID purposes, they might feel like they need to do that or just to expand the opportunities for that. Could they could we theoretically still host the event and have them 
you know, through you guys somehow submit answers or, or something like that? Do you, oh, could you guys support? I think so. And our team can get together and talk more specifics with you and give, create different ideas to help you accomplish what you want. So um, please make, you know, make sure you reach out to us because our team can collaborate with you for different ideas. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Great. Uh, hey, put that link in there again. That is a great opportunity to have a free consultation. I mean, free, right? It's for me. It's free, <laughs> right? Hello. Listen, Leanne, Michelle, um, and Jeannie, and who else? Nicole and everybody from Rally Up. I want to thank you for taking the time to be here today. This was a lot of information. And you're the first one we did with the Zoom. We saw all these spaces. Yay. Wasn't that engaging? Yay, yay. So I hope other partners will, will follow. It's great to see your faces. Listen, as you're taking care of the world, this is everybody. I'm speaking to everybody. Please <laughs> make sure you take care of yourself. All right. I'll have a great day. Thank you Thanks so much, Teresa. Thank you, everybody. Bye, all. <laughs>